Well, there's the first one down. Now, it actually looked for a moment like that one was going to fly on, but it's dropped like a stone. Now, some of you may well recall that a few weeks ago I had quite a good session in the woods and I was targeting uh, corvids that had homed in on a cereal crop and a mate had actually tipped me off, off about it with a text message. I moved to that side of the woods, had quite a good session, also shot a fair few squirrels. Now in the same spot today, but um, obviously times have moved on, the crop's ripening now and the birds are actually hammering a flat spot that's been flattened by wind and rain. Now I can't get across the field to target them there because obviously we'd, we'd squash more of the crop and that would be a bad thing. So once again, I'm targeting them here. They're flighting back and forth to the woodland edge. So hopefully we'll get a few more. That one was a bit closer, about 20 meters. And that's a shot I really like to take up under the fold of the wing and straight up through the vitals. Now, you get that shot in the right place at that angle and it's lights out. Well that is an all too familiar sight when you're targeting corvids. Now crows, rooks and jackdaws, they're very flighty birds and it isn't always easy to get a bead on them as that one proved. And I don't think it clocked me, I just don't think it wanted to hang around. Well, that jackdaw made the mistake of hopping right out into clear view then. Now, they're significantly smaller birds than crows and rooks. They're actually sort of quite slightly built. And as with that one, a solid smack to the upper body will usually snuff them out really swiftly. Well, this is actually turning out to be a pretty frustrating session. There are plenty of birds about, but there's not really much that I can do to steer them towards me. Now, as I said, I don't want to, and I can't um, target the flat spot properly because I don't want to go trampling through the crop. And there aren't really any open areas here where I can put out decoys to maybe sort of steer a few birds this way. So. They don't seem to be spooked, and I, I don't think they're clocking me and acting like they're alarmed, so I think my concealment's okay, so all I can really do is sit here, still and quiet, which is usually about the best way to go unnoticed, and just hope that a few more continue to drift over this way, land within range and present me with clear shots. Well, that was another jackdaw, and I've, I've got to say, we're, we're overrun with them in this part of the world, and they do cause a heck of a lot of crop damage, probably more than a lot of people realise. Now, that particular shot was one that I will often take if the angle isn't too steep, and the aim is to sort of plant it right between the shoulders so it has that clear route straight into the vitals. Now, a good thing with that shot is 
that if you happen to sort of place it a little bit too high, it's still going to be a clean headshot. Now, the FX Impact Mark II that I'm using today is FAC rated, but in all honesty, the sort of ranges that I'm shooting over will be just as well uh, suited to sub 12 foot pounds. Um, the reason I grabbed this gun is that I'm hoping to target a few rabbits in the paddocks when we finish if there's sufficient light left and the extra reach will certainly come in handy if I find myself shooting off of a bipod trying to take out those more wary rabbits at longer range. Um, now a point I often make also is the fact that I'm only running this gun, although it's FAC rated, at 30 foot pounds which is relatively low these days and I use uh, standard 16 grain 2-2 pellets which run out of steam much more quickly than much heavier pellets running up seriously high velocity and knowing that I've got a big clear fallout zone I know the estate very well it's absolutely vast I feel that that's perfectly safe and I certainly wouldn't consider these elevated shots with a significantly more powerful air gun. I don't think that squirrel thought I could see it in that little shady spot there. Now I've actually seen quite a few moving around this afternoon, but that was the first one to really settle anywhere where I could get a clear shot at it. Now, grey squirrels are such destructive rodents. A lot of people talk about and are well aware of the impact that they have on our native red squirrels, which is true, but far too often overlooked is the fact that they impact on pretty much the entire woodland ecosystem be it songbirds, small mammals such as dormice, and obviously they do really extensive tree damage, so I will always take them out whenever I can. Um, I'm actually gonna wrap the session up there. I've been sat here for a long time, so I'm quite eager to get moving, but also, as I said, I wanted to have a go at those rabbits. It hasn't been quite as productive as I'd hoped, but I still think we've done a bit of good while we've been here, so I'm gonna head across to the paddocks now, have a go at those rabbits, and if that goes to plan, we'll show you in a future episode. Not the easiest session there, but a few pests brought to book nonetheless. Next up, I'm taking a look at the Virac HW110 in its thumbhole laminate version. I've got a lovely little air gun here this week. It's the Virac HW110 in its thumbhole laminate, guys. Now, the recommended retail price for this model is a thousand pounds and although that isn't exactly cheap I think it represents great value for such a well-made air gun that carries the reassurance of the tried and trusted Virac brand and has had some great internal and external tweaks over recent years. As you can see this model has a thumbhole stock in a lovely grey laminate. Now it's ambidextrous and aside from that elegant thumbhole cutaway, the stock also features an adjustable butt pad. Now that feature combined with a nice high cheek piece ensures that you've always got good alignment between your eye and your chosen optic. Now the spacious thumbhole cutaway sits behind a steep, contoured pistol grip that sets me up really well for the trigger. Now the pistol grip is adorned with some really nice crisp stippling and there are panels of that same stippling to improve grip along the forend. Now it's a nice long forend with plenty of room to accommodate your leading hand and the gun also comes supplied with a removable Picatinny type rail which you can attach to the underside of the forend for accessory attachment. This is a pretty compact air gun and it measures up at about 98 centimeters with the supplied silencer fitted. Now it tips the scales at 3.4 kilos, unscoped, 
and it's very nicely balanced. Uh, with this scope setup, the point of balance falls about eight centimeters in front of the trigger blade. It feels very nice in the shoulder and thanks in no small part to that laminate stock is also very kind on the eye. Vyruck has a fine reputation for the standard of its precision German engineering and that is certainly evident in this air gun. It feels really solidly constructed and the finish is absolutely flawless. Now the 41 centimeter barrel comes fitted with a Vyruck high efficiency silencer which really is effective and scope attachment is via a Picatinny type rail incorporated into the polymer action. The HW110 runs a 10 shot drum magazine and it comes supplied with two of them. Now it looks pretty basic in design but it's actually brilliantly engineered and that simplicity means that there really is nothing that can go wrong with it. Now to remove it you pull the side lever all the way back and then push up the switch that holds the retaining pin. It then pulls straight out from the side. You then load it with pellets nose first from what I would describe as the notched side. Um, once it's full you then push that switch back up, push the magazine in, return the side lever and the gun is cocked, loaded and ready to shoot. I really like side lever actions and the updated cocking system on this model really is very good. Now UK distributor Hull Cartridge can even switch the side lever over to the opposite side for left handers or you can order a left hand version when you buy it. Now for me I found it to be well positioned and very intuitive to operate. It's quick and reliable and just as you'd expect from Vyruck, smooth and very efficient. When it comes to design and function, Vyrac triggers have been setting the standard for decades and the one on the 110 is excellent. Now I really like the trigger blade, it's got a nice wide face that transmits plenty of feel and the two stage unit is brilliant. Now it is adjustable but this one has been set up just about perfectly for my liking. Um, first stage weight and travel are just right, then there's a very positive stop and that's followed by a crisp and utterly creep-free second stage break. The manual safety catch is positioned within the action safely away from the trigger blade. Now it's very easy to access and there's a switch on both sides of the action to make it ambidextrous. Now it's safe when it's down in the forward position and then you simply flick it up when you're ready to take the shot. This air gun is fitted with an elegant cylinder which holds enough air to deliver 110 shots in 177 caliber and 140 in 22 and that's from a full 200 bar fill. It's also worth pointing out that 0 .20 caliber is available to special order. Now there is an easy to read gauge at the front of the cylinder and that provides a clear visual indication of your remaining air reserves. Also, it's so easy to read that you don't need to look directly down from the muzzle end to read it, you can read it from the side. Uh, when it is time to refill, you simply pull the stopper out from just behind the gauge and then plug in with the supplied probe. The gun that I've been sent for review is 177 caliber and it's producing a muzzle energy of 11.4 foot-pounds with Vyrac f and Special pellets. Now, thanks to Vyrac's self-regulating system, it's also pretty consistent and consistency was within 5 feet per second over a string of 10 shots and that was with pellets taken straight from the tin. Now, the supplied high efficiency silencer, I've got to say, is also very effective and that also means that the HW110 is a very quiet performer. I have shot a few HW110s in the past and they've all been very accurate. As expected, this one was equally good. Find the right pellet and you can expect it to literally stack them on top of each other at 30 meters and this is an air gun which is still more than capable of single holing at 40 meters in windless conditions. So that's the Vyrac HW110T laminate. Powerful, accurate, compact and quiet 
I think it would be an excellent choice for air gun hunting, although it's also a really competent performer on the range. Now, thanks to that laminate stock, it's also very handsome and given Virac's reputation for really solid, dependable build quality, it should give years of good service with little more maintenance than the occasional wipe down with an oily cloth. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, I'll be back again with more in two weeks. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe, and do take a look at the subscription offers for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. So, I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.